what is hot analytics? Hot analytics is uh, fast, fresh for everybody. We mean by that by fast sub-second query response times. This is really critical when um, we talk about when we get into the workflows, which we'll talk about in a few slides. Fresh data, uh, streaming, real-time data. Actually, you can do fast queries on top of non-real-time data. That actually makes a lot of sense. I think it's most exciting when you're doing both fast and fresh, but um, the fast is really the key word there. If, if uh, you need fast analytics, even on a little bit staler data, that this, this, still, this stuff still kind of makes sense. And then for everybody, um, the whole point of these systems, the, the reason that you want, um, and again, we'll talk about this with the use cases, but the reason that you need fast analytics, the reason you need fresh data is because you're trying to put it in the hands of a lot of people. Um, and a lot of these people are not professional data people. They're not professional data users. They're, they're marketers, they're product managers, they're engineers, um, and they expect uh, a level of performance and simplicity and, and that they're um, only gonna get from a, a very rapidly responding fresh system. So I wanna talk about these. Um, let's actually talk about the temperature gradient. Uh, so not all workloads are equal. And this, this temperature gradient concept is the, the concept that um, we think about building data architectures around. So I'll, I'll talk from left to right. Um, cold is the, uh, the farthest on the left. Um, the idea behind cold data is that everything's available. So it's, it's like the default. You can think of cold data as the stuff that you're storing in HDFS or S3 or cloud storage or, or wherever you store, wherever your, your data lake is, um, that's your cold data. It's very low cost. Um, you're basically most of the time only paying the cost of storage. Uh, so whether you're using um, Hadoop or Spark or, or S3 or whatnot, you're, you're, just, you're generally just paying the cost of storage and you're getting whatever compute comes along with that or, or you're getting temporary compute or something like that. Um, and it's not very performance sensitive. So these are workloads where you just want to dump everything in. You may be not entirely sure what you want to do with it. You may want to do a wide variety of things. You're not very performance sensitive. You are, you are price sensitive. That's cold data. That's your, that's your default. Um, some data sets are going to be warmer. Some data sets, this is going to be most data is available. Not all data, but most data is available. Uh, moderate cost, moderate performance. Um, this is sort of your your uh, balance system where you're not necessarily striving for this true real-time performance, um, but you have a little bit more idea of what you want to do with it. It's a little, you have a little bit more idea what the value is. You have a little bit more ability to justify paying a bit more money for it. Um, and you might even be dedicating some compute resources. Um, and then we go up to hot data. And hot data is business critical data sets. You're likely not going to have all of your data in, in these uh, hot at your fingertip systems for cost reasons. Uh, but business critical data sets, always online. Um, you're pretty likely here to have dedicated resources and latency is extremely important. Um, and this is a spectrum. This is a spectrum um, and different systems uh, do well at different parts of the spectrum, which I'll, I'll get into. Um, but the way to think, but that's, that's, that's this is a, a contextually how we think about it. Um, one other thing I want to bring up is it's also interesting to think about moving data between temperatures uh, because a, a, a given data set is not inherently cold or warm or hot. It's, it's an artifact of how you're using it. So if you have a new data set, as you learn more ways to get value out of it, as you learn more teams at your organization that are going to want to use it, you may take it out of a system that's designed for cold access and put it into a system designed for warm or even hot access. So it, it pays to have uh, systems available that can handle these different sorts of temperatures and, and be able to move data between them. Um, so we're going to spend most of our time talking about hot data because uh, at Imply and with Druid, that is, um, that is mostly what we focus on. Uh, we're actually doing some, if you, if you attended our previous webinars about joins, you'll, or if you attended Druid Summit, um, you'll know that we are doing some work to be able to handle warmer data in Imply and in Druid, and that's, that's actually very exciting because if you think about this data movement concept, it is actually very valuable to have a single system that can handle multiple temperatures. Um, uh, but, um, but for now, we'll talk about hot data. So uh, the workflows for hot data are really oriented around monitoring and exploration. Um, that's why you get value out of this real-time aspect of things. And, and monitoring uh, tends to be dashboard driven. Um, and exploration tends to be uh, driven by these sort of uh, ad hoc interactive tools. So at, at Imply, we made uh, Imply Pivot, which is a, a user interface uh, for Druid. That when you get Imply, you, you get uh, Druid and Pivot and, and some other stuff as well. Um, 
And the, the purpose, I have a video here for exploration because um, it's very hard to uh, explain the, the sort of um, uh, story behind Pivot or the, the idea behind Pivot without sh using a video or an animation. The reason is because the whole point of it is to be interactive exploration. So the idea is that you're using the ability of the system to see fresh data, to get uh, fresh data for monitoring, but then you're using the ability to do very fast sub-second queries, uh, even on historical data. So on both real-time and historical, getting things like comparison there um, to be able to do ad hoc exploration using drag and drop. So these uh, UI-wise, this is the kind of workflow you can expect for um, uh, hot uh, analytics, a hot data set. Um, in terms of uh, areas, use case areas, these are what we see a lot of uh, our customers doing. Um, I would say that, that we do have some people using Druid and Apply for warmer type stuff. Um, and like I said, that's, that's a very interesting area to think about being able to handle both, but um, the lion's share of people using Druid and Apply are using it for uh, hot use cases. Um, so I'm gonna pick out a couple of these and, and talk about uh, motivating why they why they matter. So um, one of them is is clickstreams. So clickstreams is you know you have a website, you have a mobile app, um, you are looking at what users are doing on that that website or mobile application, uh, and both of those capabilities, both fast and fresh, matter a lot for clickstreams. Um, so the the fast ability, ability to have uh, data be loaded in real time, matters when you're you're looking at something that's happening today, and that could happen, for example, if you're a product manager and you're rolling out a new feature and uh, a new uh, you really there's a new version of the software going out, a new version of the app you just pushed out to the app store. You want to understand: Are people using it? Does it work? Is it throwing errors? Is it increasing engagement? Is it decreasing engagement? Maybe you're doing A/B tests and you want to measure the A/B tests. Whenever you're doing uh, analyses that require looking at what's happening today, um, which do come up a lot in, in click streams, um, that fast, or so that fresh aspect matters a lot. Um, the fast aspect matters a lot too for historical queries. So for click stream data sets, historical uh, query workloads that, that make a lot of sense include retention analysis, estimating the size of your audience, understanding the usage of features over time, understanding the behavior of your user base over time, understanding how your user base evolves over time. Um, is it, is it uh, growing? Is it shrinking? Is it changing demographically in some way? Um, are you getting it from different sources? Uh, that kind of stuff. Um, and those are all historical analyses that don't really need real-time data, but they do need the ability to do very fast queries. And they need it because um, you have a very iterative exploratory workflow. You're trying to understand what's going on. Um, another one that, that I can bring up is uh, metrics and APM. So uh, Druid is, is uh, an interesting database. <laughs> um, it's not really conceived of as a time series database. We don't really think of it that way. Uh, but it actually is pretty good for time series data. Um, and uh, that, is, that is because it turns out that, so Druid is a relatively general purpose database and it, it turns out that general purpose analytical databases are actually pretty good for uh, time series data. And a lot of specialized time series databases, what you're seeing is you're seeing them um, evolve under the hood to look less like the classic TSDBs of yore and more like, more like general purpose databases like Druid. So that's, that's an interesting thing that's happening. Um, so metrics and APM. Uh, people use uh, Druid for that kind of stuff. Um, again, same sort of things. Freshness matters, uh, of course, for metrics and APM. Freshness probably matters for these the most of anything. Uh, you want to be able to get observability into what's happening right now. Um, but the, the ability to do fast historical comparisons matters too, because observability into what's happening now doesn't really tell you that much unless you can compare it to what's happened in the past. You might see that you have... Uh, a certain level of CPU usage or a certain level of connections being made. But the only way to tell if that's normal or not is to look at uh, past data. Um, when you're doing troubleshooting, when you're doing diagnostics using metrics or APM type workflows, this ability to really pivot through your data set is super important. Um, I won't go through all of these. But hopefully, hopefully I gave you a flavor of why this ability to do uh, real-time ingestion, real-time querying is, um, is useful. Uh, in a in a variety of of applications.